was cooking. Today we're going to be looking at how to mix your beats, how to mix your kicks, your snares, and your hi-hats in Logic Pro X. You can honestly do this in any DAW because it's just an audio file and I'm using third-party EQs for this. I'm going to be showing you what to listen for to be cutting and boosting in your samples because I know you're using samples. I'm using samples, so there's no reason to be judgmental on my side. I'm not being judgmental. So what we're going to be doing today is I'm just going to kind of go through a little bit of EQ, a little bit of compression, and I'm going to clean up this this track. It's it's a quick little track I made. Uh, I'll go ahead and play it for you, and then we'll get started. All right, so you get the picture. We're getting with kicks, snares, rides, toms, and hi-hats. I was using another snare. It was kind of like a boom bap snare, but I ended up switching to an 808 snare. So we're going to be mixing with that today. So what I usually do is whenever I'm done producing my song, I'll go ahead and either bounce things out so I'm not working in MIDI, or I'll just group things together like uh, the drums I have right now. I can work better within a group. And for what, for the purposes right now, we're just gonna go ahead and solo out the kick and I'm going to uh, apply compression to it. All right, so I'm, I'm doing a quickish attack um, my releases, I'm just following the kick, the kick decay. So kind of how the kick comes back, you can, it kind of goes with the kick, you can see. Um, and then I'm taking out 7 dB and I'm using a 2 to 1. It's kind of how it works. I'm using the Studio Fet, Studio Fet model. For EQ, I'm going to use this Fab Filter Pro Q2, but you can use any EQ you want. This is just my, this is just something I'm more comfortable with. What you're looking for here is a card-ish kind of sound, kind of like a uh, like a cork pop. It's just like this very terrible resonant that takes out kind of the focus from the, the the low end body of the kick. So I'm gonna cut that right here. I'm gonna do I'm gonna do about seven dB, maybe maybe less. Yeah, hell yeah. And uh, now I'm gonna look around the 80 hertz area for the body of the kick. There's, a, there's some really good stuff around 70, honestly. Uh, you might not be able to hear it definitely on a laptop or something, but I'm gonna, the way I want to boost it is I want to boost everything that's... I want to kind of boost everything near the cut so the boost seems a little bit bigger than it is. So that's why I kind of widened the cue. Actually. Yeah. It's a little better. I'm closer to 90, 90 hertz right now. Now what I'm doing is I'm looking for the attack of the kick drum, kind of the pedal on the on the kick. Somewhere around here. If you're wearing good headphones, you can definitely tell a difference between that. EQing a kick drum is crucial. I don't know why you wouldn't do it. Once you learn how to EQ a kick drum, if you do not EQ a kick drum, you're gonna you're gonna regret it. Especially if you have bad samples. I, I kinda wanna pull this back. Next up, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, EQ my snare. For this, I'm using just a really simple 808 snare. 
And for this specific snare, I'm because it has so much attack, I'm going to end up using the CLA-76. But all you need to do is look for kind of a fast attack, fast release compressor. Yeah. Yeah, to me that really does help. It kind of it adds warmth to it. I hate using buzzwords, but it adds warmth to it. It makes it sound a little better, a little easier to listen to. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of do the same thing I did on the kick. I'm going to look for something bad and I'm going to take it out. It's kind of hard to do on 808 stuff. Well, not 808 kicks, but like 808 snares. I don't know. It takes out body. That adds it though. Yeah. I'm boosting. You can kind of see these these frequencies in the analyzer. There's. I'll I'll boost this up so you can really hear it. Kind of sounds like an EDM something, but like I'm just boosting that frequency to give it a little body, and then I'm cutting the frequency that's really harsh in front of it to make it seem a little higher. Even yeah, there's nothing back there, so. So now that I've kind of worked with those frequencies, we're going to go try to find that attack. It's going to be kind of around uh, 2.5K. Yeah. It's not changing the world, but it sounds good. I'm going to add that little bit of high end to make it even, even more than it is. I might get those overlapping notes. All right, now that we got the 808 snare and the kick done, I think we should just go ahead and move on to the hi-hat. My hi-hat's muted at this part of the arrangement, so I'm just going to unmute it. Well, take a listen. Uh, this is a really bad sample. So what I'm going to want to do, I'm not, there's no compression or anything, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a high pass filter, scoop out a lot of that sound. This isn't even, this isn't even something that you would normally end up using. I use this because I like the, the vinyl pop sounds. I wanted to hear that. I, this isn't even a real hi-hat. Well, it is a real hi-hat, but it's not like something that you would want to use. All right, that's going to do. Throw that back into the, the pit of hell. The next logical step is the toms. We're going to go ahead and uh, make sure they sound really, really meaty, really full. And to do that, I'm going to use the 1176 emulation. I like the compressed sound of that, so we're going to keep it. And the EQ is, the EQ on the toms, very similar to everything else. We're just going to be looking for frequencies that just don't very don't sound very good. Now you gotta be careful. That that thins it out a lot. Yeah. We're just getting whistle noises. Yeah. really brings out the decay on that EQ. Now that I got tom one set, I'm going to throw the same compressor on the other toms. I'm doing option drag to do that. And then I'm going to just do new EQs for these. I really recommend if you're going to do toms, making sure you give each tom its own track so you can pan them out. Pan toms are the coolest things ever. 
pantoms with good reverb. These are already panned out, so it's pretty weird that I'm EQing these. I'd recommend that you go ahead and make sure you're not panning until after you've EQed and compressed. I'm kind of doing this backwards, so. Man, these, this frequency knob sucks. So that's just a really, really quick. So what we have now is EQ'd and compressed our kick, snare, hi-hat, and toms. I'm just going to go ahead and play for you what that sounds like without the hi-hat, because the hi-hat, not very conventional. These could be a little louder. So that's kind of what we got going on right now. You can obviously get a lot more in depth with this, but I just want to kind of show you what a little bit of EQ and compression can do to your drums and your beats. I think it's stupid not to do it because it really does improve the sound of your beats. It might make your beat stand out amongst the others because it just, the sound quality is so much more improved. Everything seems a little more focused, a little more upfront, and, uh, and nothing's really stepping on each other as much anymore. So I hope this video was helpful. Again, to reiterate myself, this was not where I would stop, I'd keep going. But for the sake of this video, I'm gonna go ahead and end it here. If you want another video and more in depth on something, just leave it in the comments below. And until next time.